Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode on Knaveswell Farm. So if you didn't know already, Knaveswell Farm has been released and the download link is below. It's been out for a couple of days. So you can now download the map and give it a go. You definitely do not want to miss this. But as you can see here, we've got the Fen 820 with the McHale Fusion 3 by Sam N. I did already have the Fusion 2 on a taste of Donegal. Uh, but yeah, gone for this one now because this one is much newer um, and apparently a lot better as well. So I've just used it on field number 20. This was our, I think it was a wheat or a barley field. And um, the straw started to disappear as it does do on soil mod. It seems to disintegrate over time. So I had to quickly do that before uh, soil mod updated again. So that is done. It did disappear quite a bit, so we didn't really get too many bears out of it, but there's a few. Uh, plenty enough for what we need anyway. So uh, what we need to do now is go over to our grass field, which is field number 24, and we need to go and row up that and also bale it as well. It's not going to be wrapped, so it shouldn't take too long to do this, but the fent will be on a worker, as usual. So we'll just jump in there, get it started off on follow me. I'll also turn off four-wheel drive. And we'll be in the Deutz far. Now this tractor, again, I, I don't know how long we're going to keep it for. I do want to change it for the Drop Nose Massey Ferguson. Because that one you can put the row crop tyres on. Which will be very handy when it comes to spraying. I was using the John Deere for the spraying tractor, but we can always transfer it over. So if we can just get up the lane a bit, then I can jump out and we'll be able to shut the gate. Oh, and also probably shut the door as well. There we go. Uh, so, yeah, shut the gate. And we'll drive over to field 24. So, don't want to be doing too much bailing, because we've been doing it quite a lot recently on all of our episodes, and we've still got it to come on Thornton Farm next week. So, uh, yes, we've got to do this really quickly. Also with regards to the spraying. It does have to be done. A few people complaining about it being done all the time. Uh, I have actually done some of it off camera already. Um, I have sprayed for number 10 again with water. And as you can see, it's looking a lot better. In fact, if I get close enough, we should see the soil moisture is much higher. There you go. 47%, it was about 26, I think. And also I've just noticed the pH is slightly acidity. So we need to keep that fairly neutral, otherwise it's going to affect our yield. But as you can see, it has gone up a growth stage as well. So, okay so far. But the row crop tyres will certainly help when it comes to spraying. So field 24 is up here. If we turn right in here, this is the way to get to it. The fence has got stuck. It, they do get stuck sometimes on this track. I'm not sure what it is. I, I've always wondered why some machines get stuck and others don't, but I'm sure there is a, an explanation for it. We will sort the fence out in a minute. Okay, looking at it, I uh, can't actually see what it is. I think it might be Pickup? Oh no, the pickup is not touching the floor. Nope, pickup was already up. Uh, so yes, we just have to drive it there ourselves, I think. It must have just sort of grounded out on one of the ridges. Really don't know what that is. Four-wheel drive will help. Yes, it's definitely the baler that's doing it. If you detach, it's fine. So it must just be grounding out on the ridge in the middle of the track. There is one way around it, and that is to travel with one wheel in the center and the other wheel on the left hand side. That is the only way I know of to uh, bypass that issue. But we can get that back onto follow me. We'll open the gate and we will begin to, oh wow, look at that. It's already grown back. That is annoying actually. I can't believe how quickly that has grown back. We better get this done really quick. Mm -hmm. 
There are a few things about solar mod which I don't like, other things which I do. I know that you can adjust the interval at which it updates and it's actually set to one day at the moment which is probably not enough looking at that because we haven't really had time to dry it off properly and row it up and bale it so um, I think what I might do is do what I did to Thornton Farm and that is to increase the interval time to two days. It will still work and in fact it seems to be deleting the grass which is growing back again doing this so I guess it's not all bad but not exactly realistic. So that's working, good. And there, there is one thing actually, one thing about that Fusion 3. You do have to manually remove the second bale from the back of it, I think, because it sort of holds onto one ready to wrap it, but we've got wrapping it disabled. So what I really want to do is just sort of blast through this field, get it done really quickly, but carefully. We can't really be missing anything because we need to get as much of the hay as possible. I think the first bale, well I accidentally put it onto wrap mode because I was trying to find an option to automatically drop the second bale but I couldn't find one and then I accidentally turned on wrapping and you couldn't go back from it. So there is one wrapped bale which will actually register as silage I think. So I guess one way of looking at it is it's a very expensive bale. Uh, but yes, it seems to be going okay. The second job we need to do today is to drill for number 8 and possibly number 9 as well. Number 9 hasn't been cultivated, it's just been ploughed, uh, but because we've got a direct drill it will actually cultivate it or power harrow it as well. Uh, so trying to decide the best option there. Either way will work, it's farming simulator, so you know it's, it's not 100% realistic. But fur number 8 can definitely be done. It's going to be planted with canola, as that is the herbicide we put on there. So, yeah, herbicide A, I think it was. There is no herbicide currently on the fill number nine, so we've still got the option as to what crop we want. Let's wait here for it to catch up, otherwise the follow me can actually stop. And we do need to sell all of the silage we've got in the BGA because that is just sort of sat there, all fermented, ready to go. Uh, I would love to buy a wheel loader, but I'm kind of worried that we're gonna buy one and then it's not gonna be able to load it because before we had that issue where it kept stopping, just before the processing unit. So it's a bit of a gamble. It probably would be better to rent one, but then I don't wanna keep renting stuff. Somebody already picked up on it a few episodes back saying stop renting because, you know, it's, it's unrealistic. Just keep taking machines out for an hour. But I might just have to, depends. Once we have sold the silage, we can then buy all of our cows. We're sort of desperate because I need to start slurrying these grass fields. Uh, they are desperate as well. And the soil moisture is not that good. For some reason, I don't know if it's just me, but I don't tend to get many rainy days on Farming Simulator. I've tried to look for a mod which is preventing that, and I couldn't really find one. So, you can probably tell by watching my videos, do I have an unusually low number of rainy days, or is it about standard? Because I've kind of picked up on it, we don't really get many wet days at all. And there we go. There are a few bits missed, but overall, it's done a pretty good job. Uh, we'll just try and tidy up a little bit. So there we go. The fence is just finishing up. It's much tidier than it was. So we'll open the gate, and we will return to the farm. And I think we should probably get a pressure washer, if we don't have one already. Because all of these machines are really dirty. I think I'll probably do the massive silage selling session tomorrow because it does need to be done. We need to buy these cows and also sheep and there are a few pieces of equipment which I'd like to buy as well. So 
So I'm just going to try and put it in here. It might be a bit of a challenge, but luckily we've got the rear wheel steering. Slow and steady. In fact, it's actually overdone it there. Right, that's okay. So we'll disable the PTO. We'll drop it off. I think the fence has got stuck on that track, as it does do. Um, and what I would love to do now is wash this tractor. It really does need it. And then eventually, we'll replace it with the Massey Ferguson. Yeah, it just got stuck on the end there, pulling out the junction. So the baler can go into, well, <laughs> it can go in one of the sheds, but it's going to be a bit congested. I might try and put it in here. Yeah, that'll do. So we will need this baler again at some point, but at the moment we've got our straw bales, we've got the hay bales, and we have a rogue silage bale as well. So we're doing pretty good. Just jump out and take the PTO off. We'll drop that off there. This is the tractor we're going to use to do the seed drilling with. So we'll get it attached to it. It should already have seed in there because we got it already last time. But I had to move it out of the way because I needed the tractor for the baler. So yeah, it's pretty good. We'll turn four-wheel drive off again. I tend to leave it on by accident. And yeah, let's just check the pressure washer situation. So we don't own any. We can afford it, so we will buy one. And I think ideally, probably somewhere around the silage pit, because the water can sort of run into there and it'd be okay. So like here, that should be fine. I'll just start up the Deutzfahr and give it a quick wash. It has to be presentable before we sell it anyway. Wow, it's amazing how quickly these machines get dirty when they're being used. Well, that should be good. Nice and clean. Switch off and let's go and do our drilling. So certainly, field number eight is going to be all seed rape. Field number nine, to be honest, <laughs> I don't know. I will uh, probably think about it when I'm doing this field. We don't have too much all seed rape. In fact, what did I plant in field number 10? I've forgotten now. I think it was wheat. Yeah, that was wheat. So yeah, a bit of all seed rate will be fine. It's actually a very good crop to do. And uh, actually, yes, it's a bit scruffy at the bottom end here. So I might sort of tidy it up. A smaller drill would do a better job, but we don't have one. See, it's, it's a bit tight here, and I've made a bit of a mess with the plough. So yeah, that's, that's an improvement at least. So let's put this onto the OSR setting. There are a few weeds in fur number nine, so it's gonna need to have herbicide sprayed on it. Uh, whether or not we do that before or after the uh, seeding, I'm not too sure yet. The thing about this field is, it's very small. And originally, it wasn't even an arable field, so I made a bit of a mistake there, I think, I would say.
We did the headland last. That's where we're turning. Yeah, the thing about Knaves Farm Farm is some of the fields are big enough to use the big equipment and then some of them are you know, small enough to be only using the small equipment. So we need to have a bit of both really, which makes it quite expensive. This should finish it off. We're actually doing really well with this field. It's got weed prevention for three days. The soil moisture is pretty good. Some of the nutrients. So yeah, it's it's not really need too much work on this field yet, which makes it a lot easier. Anyway, we are done. So really, the last job to do is to use the spreader or sprayer on field nine, but I'm not going to do that today, just because I want to, you know, I want to diversify a bit from spraying. We do it quite a lot. I might even do it off off camera. But this can go back in the shed down here. I think this is a good place for it. Handy for the seed as well. And then really, all I can see is doing is putting the front loader on the tractor, selling a few more bucket loads until we can afford the wheel loader, and pretty much going from there. I will just put the beacons up, because they tend to be folded down and don't look the best like that. So the front loader, I think I left it up there actually. We'll see how much I can sell. There is also one more maize field which we do own and again it is sort of on the verge of withering. We probably should get it done or we could get a, a corn header for the combine but I don't usually do that because it's not really done in the UK that much. So I suppose we could do it. It's probably a much cheaper method of harvesting it because we obviously don't own the, the forage harvester. Uh, but you decide. Let me know and we'll do whichever way you say. In fact, I might even put a pole in this video. It is fill number one, I think. I'll just double check. Yes, fill number one on the final growth stage. So if that updates once more, which it will do, uh, if it gets too hot today, I think unless it is just the soil moisture, not sure, but certainly at midnight it will do. Um, yes, it will uh, wither within the day, 24 hours. So yes, I'll sell a few more bucket loads, see how much we can get. Obviously there is a lot of money sat there. And then eventually, we'll be able to get a wheel loader to do this for us hopefully. And it will just save a lot of time. But as you can see, it's almost 3,000 pounds per bucket load. Very impressive. This tractor does actually suit the front loader very well, which is surprising. I didn't think it would do with it being a big tractor. Uh, but yeah, it looks pretty good. It's just the bucket capacity is a bit too small for the uh, amount of silage we do own. If it was just a tiny bit, it wouldn't really matter. But we have a lot here. It is uh, the amount you'd want to use a wheel loader for.
So that is £30,000, obviously not even close to over £200,000, which is what it would cost to buy the JCB and the bucket. Uh, but to rent it, I'm just kind of wondering what it would cost. Okay, it's quite expensive. £513, well it says here, per hour, which is, you know, that is expensive. So, I don't know, we do need to rent one because we're never going to get to uh, £200,000 in a hurry with this little bucket. So, I think, yes, I'm going to make a decision between this video and the next one and go from there. We'll just do one more bucket load now and then we'll call it a day. We'll do a big silo session tomorrow. If it is a wheel loader, I can probably do it myself because it'll do it so quickly. We're in real time so it isn't processing it too quickly. But there we go. £33,034, so we'll drop that off there. Switch the engine off, put the handbrake on, and we'll jump out. So, yes, please do let me know what you think we should do. That's processing. Yeah, I, th I think renting the wheel loader is the best option here, because then we'll be able to sell this quickly, we'll be able to buy the cows, then we'll have the slurry and the manure for the fields. So in the long run, this is just going to make things a lot better. I'll be able to use a muck spreader or a slurry spreader rather than spraying so much. There will still be some spraying, but not quite as much. So there we go. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video and I will return to Naveswell Farm the same time tomorrow. So until then, thanks again and bye for now.